In this video, I'm going to show you five super practical techniques to make your type look great in any motion graphics project. After years and years of client work, these are my go-to methods to elevate type animations quickly and effectively. If you've got type in your project, you probably want it to be red. So don't go over the top with any zany or bouncy effects. You really want your type to be more subtle and feel deliberate. And you can download this project file for free in the description as well. So let's start off with something really basic, a straight up really clean, really sharp position animation. And we're gonna add a bit of flavor into it later. So I do apologize if I cover some topics that you already know. So we've got our text layer right in the middle. This is where we want it to finish. So we're gonna keyframe its position property here and then work backwards from where we want it to enter. So at the start of the animation, let's just drag it down and we don't need it to move too much. That's probably too much. Let's drag that up a bit there. It doesn't need to travel far at all. Now let's easy ease those with F9 and let's go into our graph editor and in the speed graph, I'm just gonna drag this curve way over to the left and this one way over to the left as well. So we have as steep of an easing as possible. So now it starts fast and really eases into its final resting position. Now this can work fine on its own, but let's add some opacity animation as well. So let's keyframe its opacity at 100 at the end of the animation and then zero at the start. And let's create the same easing on those keyframes. There, this type animation will work in 90% of all your client projects. But there's a couple of things we can do to elevate it further. One is to add a subtle color animation. So let's go over to our effects and presets, find the fill effect. And the default red is actually pretty good. So we're gonna keep that. And at the very start of our animation, keyframe its color to be red. And then a little bit later, maybe not the full length of our animation, let's change that to white. There, I'm gonna press U on our keyboard to bring up our keyframes down here. And with the fill effect, we get a nice little description of our color down here. And let's just easy ease that back keyframe with F9. Now, if we play it back, we get a really subtle bit of color as it pops in. So it starts off red when it's barely visible and then quickly becomes white. This is something I noticed in the Stranger Things title sequence. And I thought, ah, that's a really good way to just add a bit of something extra to a really simple fade in animation. Now, another thing we can add to this animation is to add a blur effect. So let's hide our fill effect for now and add the effect Gaussian blur. Let's keyframe its blurriness at zero and then come forward and keyframe it at 20. Let's easy ease those keyframes as well. And now when it enters, it's slightly out of focus at the start. And this is just something really subtle and just adds a bit more polish to your animation. If that serves the design style you're working in. Done. Now let's go on to text coming out of a line. Now this effect is beloved by clients. There is even a meme about it. So here's how to do it. So we've got our text animating its position like in our previous comp. And now we're gonna draw a line. I'm just gonna grab our pen tool, change its stroke to white and change its stroke width to maybe two. I'm actually gonna bring up our title action safe area so I can just see the middle of our comp. And I'm gonna draw a line by clicking down, holding shift and clicking down on the right. We can use our align tools to align that to the very center as well. And we can get rid of our title safe now. Great, now let's open up its properties and add a trim paths. Let's also name that layer line because we always label our layers. And if we open up the trim paths properties, we can see we have the start and the end and they determine how much of our line is visible through what percentage of the path. If we just grab our end percentage and scrub through that, we can see that it starts drawing on our line from zero to 100. So let's keyframe the end of 100. And at the start of our animation, if we drag that down to zero, we can see we've animated our line drawing on. Now, if we want our line to draw out of the middle, we can keyframe the start and end at zero and 100 respectively at the end of our animation. And then at the beginning, let's keyframe them both at 50. So it starts animating from halfway through the path. There we go, we've got our line animation. Let's drag that in front of our text as well. There, let's add some easy ease with F9 and increase those in the graph editor. And now let's reveal our text coming out of this line. So let's select our rectangle tool and we just wanna make sure that it has a fill. And I'm just gonna draw loosely over the top of our letter where we want it to be visible at the end and just align the bottom with our line. There we are. And let's rename that matte. And let's just drag that over our type layer. And then we wanna select our type layer and on its track mat, which is this panel down here. And if you can't see this, you can toggle that on and off by clicking down here in the bottom left. And we want to change its track mat from none to alpha mat. So now we can see that text is only visible where our mat is drawn. And we can see there's a very slight gap where it's revealed as well. So if we just grab our mat layer and just nudge it downwards, that should fix that. Great. Now our text is coming out of our line. And I'm going to adjust where it comes out by moving our line to the left. 
because I want it to pop out just when there is enough of our line drawn. There we are. We don't want it popping out too early, like here. So about here is good, wonderful. Now we can quickly add some more text coming out of the bottom by selecting our text layer and our matte layer and duplicating them with Control or Command D. Let's open up the keyframes from our text layer and at its end position, let's drag this one underneath and let's change its track mat from alpha mat to alpha inverted mat. And let's change the type. Oh, this one's going way too far. Let's nudge that up a bit. There, done. This video is brought to you by Curiosity Stream, a subscription service that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles, including exclusive originals with new titles added weekly. They've got everything from quantum mechanics to crocodile mechanics with tons of great nature documentaries, which are awesome for animation, inspiration and reference. And you know, I love dinosaurs. So my first priority was seeing if the dinos were good. And yes, the dinos are good. Amazing Dino World in particular is an awesome series that has beautiful animation and rendering with great up-to-date designs with feather covered dinos that look amazing. Get unlimited access starting at just $2.99 a month or $19.99 a year. That is ridiculously affordable and probably the best deal out there for any streaming service. And just for you, the first 30 days are completely free if you sign up at curiositystream.com forward slash Ben Marriott and use the promo code Ben Marriott during the sign up process. Now for this syncing type effect. Let's start with a text layer with no keyframes or effects. And we want to keyframe its scale at 100%. So let's keyframe that here. And then at the start, we're going to increase its scale to 104%. We don't need to animate it much. Subtly is going to help a lot with this one. Now let's select those keyframes, go into the graph editor and easy ease those keyframes, which you can do in the graph editor just by clicking down here. And I want to make sure we're in the value graph where we can get the sharpest easing and drag this handle down and this handle over to the left. So now it's at its maximum speed at the start and again eases into that final position. And this is a great subtle way to add impact to text just appearing. And we can also pair that with the Gaussian blur effect. And now we've got an added bit of dimension where it feels like it's going into focus as it animates on. Now to tracking. Now tracking is the distance between all of your characters, all of your glyphs in your text. And we can change that by going to character and seeing the tracking amount here. Now ours is set really high at the moment to 600. The default is zero. But having really wide tracking is kind of, you know, looks a bit fancy and cinematic, but we can't really keyframe this property and we want to increase it. So how we do that is by opening up our text options and selecting animate tracking, which opens up a text animator down here. And we just need to keyframe the tracking amount. And let's drag that keyframe right to the start. And then at the end of our animation, which is about five seconds later, let's increase that tracking amount to 30. Now this doesn't overwrite our tracking information over here. It's still tracked to a value of 600 here, 600 points, but this is adding on top. So at the start it's zero, so it's 600, and then it goes to 630, or maybe it's adding 30% on top of that. Anyway, it stacks on top of your value that you've got here. So now we have a pretty subtle animation here, and it's just a bit more interesting than scaling up your text, I find. And hopefully it looks very cinematic. They use this a lot in film trailers, so look out for it at the end when they announce the title of the movie. Now let's animate some type with a really elegant stroke. Now we're starting with our type just where they white fill and to get a stroke on it, we can change that over here in the character panel. And we've got our fill color here and our stroke color. And if we click this arrow, we can sort our fill and stroke color. So now it has no fill and a white stroke. Now it's good to keep your stroke pretty small. I think one, two to maybe four is about enough because when you increase your stroke, it's adding to the shape of your letters to your glyphs in a way that they weren't designed for. And you can see that with the corners here of the K and the R. So once it gets pretty large, it gets pretty funky and doesn't look that great. So keep it pretty thin compared to the size of your text. I think two points works great here. And now let's add a little something to the fill of our layers as well. So I'm gonna duplicate this text layer with Control plus D and on our layer underneath it, I'm gonna swap back our stroke and fill. So now it is filled white and let's turn its opacity down maybe 35%. And we want to make a nice gradient. So I'm going to select our rectangle tool and then just draw over the bottom half of our stroke effect. Actually, let's double click and move that down so it's a bit closer to halfway. Let's zoom out and maybe expand this. There we are. Now to add a smooth gradient, we're going to press F on our keyboard to bring up our mask feather. And if we increase this a fair bit to maybe 400, let's increase that a lot. That's quite a gradual gradient. 
And there we have that across the fill of our text. And we can animate this by animating its mask path. So if we keyframe that here, then at the start, double click our mask and just drag that down. So now if we play it back, we have this sort of sort of sunrise gradient coming up from the bottom of our text. And that can be really good to add just a subtle animation when you need some text on screen and you want it to look you know, nice and elegant. But what happens when the client comes back and says, hey, we need to change the text on this. So you think, no problem. You double click, open your text box and you type in the new text, new. But that only affects one layer. The layer underneath with the fill is still says stroke and it looks like an awful mess. Now we could just go in, copy and paste or retype that word on our second layer, but we don't know when our client's gonna come back with more feedback. I want to change the text again. Or you might have an effect with lots and lots of layers and that might be more inconvenient <laughs> than with just two layers. So there's a really easy way to link the text here. And what we do is we open up our text properties, open up text and we wanna find text source for both of our layers. And we want to alter option click the stopwatch to bring up our expressions window, but we're not typing any expressions, oh no. We're grabbing the pick whip, not the pick whip over here for our layer properties, but for this source text property, we're gonna grab the pick whip and drag it over to the source text of the layer on top. And as we release that, and let me click out, both texts are now aligned. This source text is linked to the top one with an expression. So now when we retype anything up here, it changes on both layers. And we can duplicate this bottom layer to our heart's content and rechange the type again. And now all of those layers are all linked to whatever we type here. That comes in handy a lot if you've got more adventurous effects with lots and lots of layers. Now I've got a follow up video to this with five more essential text effects to take your motion graphics to the next level coming out very soon. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that one. I hope this was helpful. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.